Hello Hambini fans and welcome. In today's video I'm going to be showing you how to fix a broken frame boss. Now the frame bosses in question that this video will talk, sort of talk about are the ones for water bottle holders, um, cable guides underneath bottom brackets, cable guides on the side of the down tube and in the case of this bike the problematic uh, boss is the one that holds the rear brake on. Now this video is going to be fairly generic, um, I can't cater for everyone's particular broken frame boss but this will give you a good idea as to how to go about fixing them. I will just briefly explain why these fasteners and frame bosses and things fail. Uh, the reason is because of something called galvanic corrosion. Galvanic corrosion happens when you have dissimilar metals together. So in the case of this bike I've got um, water bottle fasteners or bosses that are aluminium and then steel and titanium fasteners that are going in. The steel and titanium is a different, different electrical charge to the aluminium so it generates a battery, a localised battery and that's what causes it to corrode. You can probably see this on the outside of your bike if you look at the stem. So in the case of my stem what I've got is I've got an aluminium stem with uh, steel fasteners going into it and around the aluminium it's gone sort of like a white powdery colour and that is galvanic corrosion. So this is my Cervelo S5, this is a week's worth of dirt from commuting. The way that um, sort of attachments are added to carbon frames is quite commonly by riv nuts. Now what a riv nut is, is a, a rivet with a threaded insert in it. Telltale giveaway is, well first of all you can see the bolt and then if I zoom in slowly around the bolt you can see what looks like a sort of round flange and there's a difference in paint between the two. So what I wanted to do was to take the back brake off my bike to clean it and when I went to put the allen key in and turn it what's happening is the riv nut which is this piece in here is turning with it. So if I zoom in a, a little, hopefully you'll be able to see that. So you can see it's also chipped the paint off. So what we need to do is we need to get this out. What you must not do is you must not pull this because what can happen is you could break your frame. So we need to get the bolt out before we attack the riv nut. The riv nut looks something like this and it's in there like that. As we thread this in or as we use a correct tool, it pushes that in and then leaves that in the frame. So the bit that we can see that's turning is this bit and that's that bit behind this bracket here. We need to spray some copious amounts of penetrating fluid or my personal favourite is Loctite freezing spray. Now you need to leave it for probably five or ten minutes. So I've come back, about, I've left it for about 20 minutes, I've come back and what we need to do is we need to get this bolt out. On this bike, the Cervelo S5, these bolts are titanium. Uh, most bikes probably will have steel fasteners but the principle is the same so we need to get the bolt out without the riv nut turning. If you've got enough access, if you can get some pliers in behind it to hold it while you turn it, then it should pop out. Failing that, we need to go for a screwdriver. All right, it's turning, so we need to just sort of wedge something into there. Okay, so I've got the riv nuts kind of halfway out and we're just turning this. Hopefully it'll pop out. Yeah, the, riv, the back of the riv nut is completely loose. So what's happened is as I've pulled it out, the riv nuts actually sheared in half. So I've ended up with half the riv nut in there and half of it out. This is the bracket that's uh, from the bike and you can see the riv nuts snapped in half. I want to reuse this bolt because it's titanium. Um, there's, the other half of this riv nut is somewhere in the bike um, but I've got this half off. Invariably when you're trying to take these things out they will always shear in half. 
Um, so in order to get this off, I've clamped it in the vise and I'm just gonna use a pair of pliers on it and then turn it over. This is the remnants of what we just took off. So there's the brake bracket, there's the titanium bolt, and there's uh, two halves, well, two thirds of the riv nut. There's another third that's still in the bike that we need to fish out. So what I did was I took the seat post out and behind there is my DI2 battery, which has got a load of foam in it as well. Uh, when I took the seat post out, the other third of the riv nut was just sitting there and I could see it. So what I've done is I've pulled the seat post out and just left it there. And then now I've put an Allen key through the hole. Uh, if we pull it back, hopefully that will come out. So that's the other part of it. Now, I was fairly lucky in the sense that the rib nut that I had in question essentially snapped in half as I was pulling it out and I managed to get to the other side. If you're not so lucky, what you will have to do is you'll have to drill the rib nut out. So in order to drill the rib nut out, uh, I'll demonstrate, but I'm not gonna really do it, how the procedure goes. So what I've done here is I've put a dummy rib nut back into the hole. And this is probably going to be this kind of situation that you're faced with. The riv nut will turn. You might not be able to see that on camera, but it is free to rotate. In order to get that out, what you have to do is you have to drill it sometimes. When you're drilling, you need to make sure that that does not turn. So hold it with a pair of pliers or something like that. Get a drill bit and then drill through there. When you drill through there, what you're doing is you are weakening the side wall and they're usually aluminium. So aluminium is soft, so any sort of high speed steel drill bit will go straight through it, no problem. A common size is M5, in which case a six millimeter drill bit would be an ideal size to start off with. And then if you've got it, a six and a half. By the time you get to six and a half, the other end will have snapped and you'll just be able to pull that out. You will need to go around and fish the other end back out of the bike. Fortunately, bikes are usually hollow, so you'll be able to get them out. It might be a bit of a faff to get it out. You might have to have the bottom bracket out or the um, steerer tube, but that's the method for getting it out. Now we've come to the stage where we need to put the threaded insert back in. In this case, I'm using a riv nut and a mechanical gun to put it back in. Another way to use it, uh, another way to do it, is if you use a riv nut or a threaded insert and use epoxy. Uh, that way you do not have any expansion forces on the frame. So if you are unsure, I would recommend you get one of these, mix some epoxy up and just put it straight in the hole. That's a fairly straightforward thing to do, but I'm going to show you how to do it with a riv nut gun. So this is the Rivnut gun. The assembly instructions for your Rivnut gun might be slightly different, but in this case, which is just a generic cheap one, um, what you have to do is you have to assemble a mandrel. So I've put the uh, one for an M5 thread in, and you just turn it, and this one is counterclockwise. That seats that. Then there's like a boss that goes on top of it, which you screw in. And now as you see, as I turn the handle, it pulls on that. Get the correct size uh, riv nut, screw it on. And now we're good to go. So what I've done is I've cleaned the hole. I've also gone and sort of sanded around the outside where the paint chipped. Um, this might not look that clean, but I have cleaned it. And now we need to put the riv nut in. So this is the Rivnut gun. I'm just gonna put it in through the hole. The Rivnut is the correct size. And you just squeeze. Now it doesn't break like a normal 
rivet it just expands ever so slightly and you have to do it by feel so I think that's done so in my case it was a bit tight so we just need to undo here to get the rivet nut gun off There we go, and that's it in, that's not gonna move. So I've got the brake caliper back now, I've put that sort of bracket on, and the rib nut is secure. We just put it back in the hole. I've cleaned the, the titanium bolt back up, and we can now put that back in. Job complete. So that's the end of this video, I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and remember to subscribe to my channel. Uh, I've got various other videos and also a website, please check that out. Uh, thank you very much and until next time.